Okay, so in our video series on emergency medicine, in this video, we'll be talking about anaphylactic shock. We'll discuss that what is anaphylactic shock, what are its causes, and what is the presentation of anaphylactic shock. We'll discuss that how do you manage anaphylactic shock in emergency department. First of all, what is anaphylactic shock? Anaphylactic shock is basically acute systemic IgE mediated type 1 hypersensitivity reaction occurring within minutes to seconds after exposure to a foreign substance means that the patient is allergic to a foreign substance and minutes to seconds after exposure to the foreign substance patient develops an allergic hypersensitivity reaction. If the patient develops hypersensitivity reaction within minutes to seconds after exposure, it is usually type 1 mediated and type 1 mediated reaction is IgE mediated reaction. In IgE mediated reaction, there is release of histamine and that release of histamine results in wheezing, cyanosis, edema and urticaria and itching of the patient. Why does this happen? We'll discuss in the detail. First of all, what precipitates an anaphylactic shock? What precipitates an allergic reaction? Usually patients are allergic to drugs like penicillin, contrast media in radiology. Some people are allergic to latex. Some patients get anaphylactic reaction after a sting bite of a bee. Or some people are also allergic to the sulfur present in eggs. Few people are allergic to fish peanuts and even strawberries. So anaphylactic reaction can be precipitated by any of these foreign substances to which body is allergic. Now, due to this type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, IgE hypersensitivity reaction in which mast cells release histamine, the release of histamine, what it occurs is that it causes vasodilation. What vasodilation does is that it leads to hypotension. Vasodilation causes hypotension, drop in blood pressure, which causes reflex tachycardia. Heart starts to beat more to supply blood to the body. So hypotension causes reflex tachycardia of the heart. And patients get laryngeal edema, bronchoconstriction, edema of the bronchi due to histamine release resulting in laryngeal obstruction and wheeze. And due to this difficulty in taking breath, these patients get cyanosed with CO2 retention. Histamine release causes itching and widespread urticaria. Patient would be sweating, patient would be having diarrhea or vomiting and due to vasodilation, there will be dilation of the vessels which re results in erythema of the body, red change in the body, urticaria, edema of the lips, eyelids, tongue, larynx. The most important thing is the protection of the airway. Since these patients develop laryngeal obstruction, wheezes, bronchoconstriction, that can cause a life-threatening attack. So protecting the airway is the highest priority. Coming to the treatment of anaphylactic shock, always approach the patient with ABC approach. Always protect the airway, secure the airway. These patients might even need intubation because of the obstruction, laryngeal edema, these patients might even need a, a respiratory support. So intubate if the respiratory depression is imminent, give 100% oxygen and remove the cause. If there is an evident cause to which patient got allergic reaction, remove the patient from the, that uh, cause and raise the patient's feet so that more blood flow gets towards the brain since the patient's vessels are vasodilated. And you give adrenaline IM 0.5 mg and you repeat it every five minutes if needed. If the patient does not get better, you repeat it. What adrenaline does is that adrenaline causes vasoconstriction and combats the hypotension. What adrenaline does is that it causes bronchodilation. Remember that it's the adrenaline, epinephrine that causes bronchodilation. Therefore, adrenaline is used in this. Norepinephrine or norpine does not cause bronchodilation. Therefore, norpine is not given. Adrenaline is given because adrenaline causes bronchodilation. 
you secure the IV access and you give chlorpheniramine 10 mg IV. Chlorpheniramine is basically an antihistamine. It antagonizes the action of histamine and reduces the allergic reaction, reduces the urticaria, reduces the vasodilation. And you also give hydrocortisone 200 mg IV. Hydrocortisone is a steroid and steroid suppresses the immune system. It suppresses the immune response in this, this hypersensitivity reaction. You give fluids, you give 0.9% saline to support the blood pressure. Since this patient is getting into shock, this patient will be having hypotension. You give fluids to the patient. And if there is wheeze and you suspect asthma, that that patient has an allergic reaction and patient has developed asthma to a, uh, to a certain agent, certain allergen, you treat asthma accordingly. How to treat asthma? I have talked about treatment of asthma in detail in my video on asthma management. For the treatment of asthma, you give short-acting beta agonist, salbutamol, albuterol. And if the patient is still hypotensive after giving adrenaline, after giving hydrocortisone, after giving fluids, if the patient is still hypotensive, you have to admit that patient to ICU and you have to now start IV infusion of adrenaline. IV infusion of adrenaline will act on the vessels and cause vasoconstriction and control the blood pressure. And you can also consider giving aminophylines with it. Aminophylines cause bronchodilation and support the respiratory system. And you can also give nebulized salbutamol. Nebulized salbutamol in ICU will cause bronchodilation. So salbutamol and aminophylline will cause bronchodilation and adrenaline will support the the circulatory shock that will support the blood pressure. So if the patient is still hypotensive, you admit the patient to ICU. And then if the patient gets better, you can shift the patient back to the ward and you monitor ECG. ECG monitoring is important so that these patients do not develop cardiac complication. You can measure serum tryptase level 1 to 6 hours after a suspected anaphylaxis since serum tryptase is released from mast cells and mast cells are involved in type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. So if you want to confirm it, the anaphylactic reaction, then you can do serum tryptase level 1 to 6 hours. You can give chlorpheniramine 4 mg every 6 hourly orally if the patient experiences itching. And when you are discharging the patient home, what you should do is that you should guide the patient about avoiding the allergen to the specific allergen that he developed anaphylactic shock. And you should also teach the patient about self-injected adrenaline EpiPen. EpiPen is 0.3 mg epinephrine, which the patient can inject himself the moment he realizes that he got exposed to an allergic agent, allergen, and he is having an allergic reaction to prevent a severe attack. And if allergen is unknown, then before discharging, you should go for a skin prick test to identify the allergens to which the patient is allergic. An important point I want to mention here that if the patient is already on beta blockers, if the patient was taking a treatment for panic attacks or anxiety attacks, or if the patient was already on beta blocker for Graves disease or any other indication for which the patient has been chronically on beta blockers, in that patient, adrenaline won't work. Since that patient has taken a, a beta blocker and that beta blocker has blocked the receptors where the adrenaline acts. So by giving adrenaline at, in such patients, you won't be able to reverse the signs and symptoms of anaphylactic shock. In such patients, you should consider giving IV salbutamol in place of adrenaline so that salbutamol causes bronchodilation and protects them from respiratory arrest since the respiratory arrest is the most dangerous complication of an anaphylactic shock. In summary, we talked about what is anaphylactic reaction, release of histamine causes it, and its presentation. We talked about the precipitating factors, the causes of anaphylactic shock. Then we talked in detail about the, the presentation in which the laryngeal obstruction and wheeze being the most important one. ABC approach, protect their ways, raise patient's weight, give adrenaline, give chlorpheniramine, hydrocortisone, and if the patient is still hypotensive, shift the patient to ICU and start him on IV infusion of adrenaline with aminophylline and nebulized salbutamol. Then you can teach the patient about self-injected EpiPen when you are discharging the patient. 
If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency treatments and managements. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.